Welcome to another installment of Canadian GT. I'm your host, Josh, and this is what replaced our 2016 Focus RS. Would you just look at it? Follow me while I take you through all the differences between this car and our 2016 Frozen White RS. As you can see, the very first difference you see is this vibrant nail polish like race red Ford calls it and it's just beautiful. This color race red was only available for 2018 and they only brought over 250 into Canada and I believe 250 into the United States. Each and every RS sold in Canada comes fully equipped. That means we get a brand new set of Michelin winter tires and winter wheels. We get a summer set of Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s with 19 inch for forged wheels. We also get a full infotainment sat nav system and we get a sunroof. As for performance, we do plan on doing some performance modifications. Things such as an intake, a cat back exhaust, possibly a tune, anything that makes the car in factory form a better performing car. We have carbon fiber everywhere on the door handles, on the e-brake handle, on the dash where the gauges are, and it looks awesome. Let's take this thing for a drive. All right, so here we are in a 2018 race red Focus RS. And I guess that begs the question to some of you of why the hell are we in a 2018 red RS and not our 2016 white RS? And to be quite frank with you all, it honestly didn't make financial sense not to. Me and my wife are both financially savvy people. Our original plan was to get into an Audi RS3. And we decided that right now, in this point of our life, we didn't want to spend that kind of money on a car. We seen these on line for $10,000 less than MSRP at 61,000. They were on line at 51,000. So we were curious of what we could get for our white car and what kind of deal we could get on one of these. Now keep in mind our white one started to need the maintenance, the routine maintenance. Um, brake pads, fluids, tires. So about $4,000 in the near future, within a year I'd say our white car needed. So keeping that in mind, we went out and seen what we could get into a brand new one for. And to make a long story short, the dealership told me to give them an offer. And I told them that my offer would be unrealistic because really going from an RS to an RS, what's exciting about that? And we came back with a number in mind and it was well under the 51,000 and he told me he wanted to move metal. He didn't necessarily care about profits at this point because he wanted 2019s to come in. So when I came back with our number that we had in mind, that was gonna be a, okay, if it's this number, we're taking it. Well, he shook our hand. So here we are in a 2018 race red Focus RS, warranty restarted. So we have an extra two and a half years of warranty. We have two brand new sets of winters and summer tires. No wear on the car whatsoever. If you recall, our white one had some quirks. It had, when we first got it, first jumped into the car, the cluster was bugging out on us. That had to be replaced. Our PTU started leaking, bad. They had to replace that. This was all the first year of ownership. And then we had the dreaded head gasket failure in our car. So within a year, our car spent more time at the dealership than it did at our house. 
But after everything was all fixed, we had about a year of pure enjoyment of the RS. After everything was all fixed and ironed out, we loved our car. So after about a year of having our white RS with all the problems fixed, we came up with getting into this car. Not on purpose, but because of Ford shaking our hand with, uh, uh, you know, let's just put it this way, they lost money on, the, on, on this car. So we're in our red limited edition, as stated before, one of 250 in Canada race red RSs with everything brand new. And the bottom line, it cost us zero dollars to get into this thing. So that's what I mean. It, it, it didn't make financial sense not to get this car with it being, you know, over $15,000 less than MSRP. We still have the sticker at $61,800 Canadian to get into this car. So there's to why we're in this car. Now, maybe you're asking, okay, why an RS? Well, like I said, the last year of ownership on our white RS, we absolutely loved the car. It was extremely fun to drive um, in bad, bad weather conditions. We've, we've been through some pretty bad snowstorms in that car and it's been rails. Like there was cars and trucks going to the, into the ditch left, right and center twice. And this car stayed its course um, of course, we were white knuckling it because everybody's going off the road, but this car was amazing in the worst weather conditions. When my wife goes and works away, she takes this car, obviously, and she was just caught in uh, freezing rain on the highway with this car. And it was, you know, I was worried, but the whole time I'm like, she couldn't be in a better car. So there's one reason. The second reason is we really did our due diligence in assessing other potential cars. STI, um, Evo, even though it would have to be used because they don't make new ones. Um, in my opinion, we did test drive all of the cars, all of the cars that I just said, the Evo and the STI. And this car is, it, it's, it's, on, it's, a, it's on its own level in comparison to those cars. It's, this car's kind of in a weird spot because it's above the STI and the Evo, in my opinion. Um, it's still in the same bubble, but it's just on a different level than the Evo and STI. More horsepower, um, better cornering. I know it has a lot to do with the summer tires, but let's just leave it at that. Better cornering, more horsepower. And I just have always loved the Cosworth name and the history it holds in the UK. So, we did our digging on those cars and then we did our digging on the other side. So the Audi RS3, again, too much money. The GLA 45, we almost got into, but we couldn't get over the fact it's a little bit more money than this car. Well, it's a bit more money than the MSRP on this car, but we can't get over the fact that it looks like a mini minivan. Um, it does outperform this car in a straight line and it is a Mercedes-Benz. But again, we couldn't get over the fact that it's a, a mini minivan. And the sound this car produces is just flawless, in my opinion. Ford did a really good job with that. So back to the cars. What we paid for this car, you can't get a better performing car. You just, like we we market researched, we did everything in our power to say to, say to ourselves, what are our, our other options? At the end of the day, we wanted a car similar to what this car presented itself with. We wanted all wheel drive. We wanted, you know, powerful turbocharged or powerful naturally aspirated, whatever you want to call it, car at the end of the day. And we decided at this stage in our life, you know, we're just before our thirties, we wanted to stay around the same price of this car rather than going, you know, full bore and 
and dropping the kind of money that an Audi RS3 demands. So that's why we chose the RS again. Um, now this one, it's an RS obviously, 85% 80, of the car is the exact same car. But as stated previously, we have the carbon fiber, which is nice to look at when you get into the car. We have the limited edition. We have the color that was only um, available in 2018. So as soon as you see this color, you know it's a 2018. And you know that it's one of 250 in Canada, which is, in my opinion, you know, that's worth some intrinsic value right there. And the side of the performance that's different that I didn't really touch was that this has an LSD up front, a Quaif LSD up front. So that's another bonus, I guess you could say. So at the end of the day, we paid absolutely nothing for this car. It's brand new. It has the carbon fiber interior. It has the special red. It has the Quaif LSD. So at the end of the day, we couldn't say no, we really couldn't. Oh, and they, they gave us, you know, in my opinion, a little bit more than market value on our white car. So, here we are in a 2018 Race Red RS. <laughs> we didn't expect it. So, I'm not gonna get into the details of the RS because there's many videos on YouTube of the RS, the four driving modes, you know, this car is fully loaded from factory, heated steering wheel, heated for car seats. These seats are amazing, they're comfy, they fit us perfectly. Um, lots of cool technology in this car. That's gonna sag me, segue me into the things that were not so hot about this thing. Um, as stated before, the, it looks like Ford fixed the fit and finish up here and the rattly A pillars, so that's awesome. Now, it hasn't got cold yet, but the one thing that I ha absolutely hate about the RSs is that that stupid flap in the exhaust dictates if you're able to switch your driving modes. And I hate that. I hate being told I can't do something because of the flap can't open. So when you switch your driving mode into sport or anything out of normal driving mode for that matter, the flap opens in the exhaust. So you get the, the special crackle and pop. If that thing can't move, you're not getting out of normal driving mode. So that would be the number one thing that I cannot stand on the RS's. The second thing that I can't stand about the RS's is that Yes, it has launch control, which is awesome from factory. I, when we found out that it had that in the 2016, we were tickled, but we never used it because you pretty much have to play a video game to get into it. So in the summertime, when I take this thing to the track, I'm not even gonna bother with launch control most likely because you don't have enough time when you're staging to play the video game and beat Bowser to get into launch control. So. If I had to pick out the worst things about the RS, those are definitely the top two, is what it takes to get into launch control. It's just, it's not easy. It's, I mean, it's easy, but it's time consuming. And the fact that your exhaust flap dictates which driving mode you're in. I absolutely hate that. But we can get over all of that with the sheer performance, handling, control that this car offers, that no other car at the price point we got this car for could offer. So another thing I'd like to talk to you guys about is the stiff ride that the RS comes with. Now, we've owned this, we've owned an RS for coming on three years now and in normal driving mode and sport mode it's definitely bearable um, i think people over exaggerate to an extent how bad it is 
Um, I've ridden in a lot of worse cars out there. My MR2 is is way worse than this thing in, in normal mode. And I think in normal driving mode or spo sport mode, this car is bearable for sure. It's it's bearable. It's stiffer than normal, but it comes with the package. You're, you're buying a, a, a race bred car from factory. You're going to have stiff suspension in order for it to be competitive. Listen to that sound. But when you switch the driving mode to race mode, it is a whole nother level of jarring. When people are in this car and it is in race mode, sometimes I just put it in for fun as a prank. They're instantly like, what the hell? This thing rides so rough. And it does. In race mode, it is way worse than the MR2. It is very jarring, very stiff. And it's a damn good thing you're not driving it around all the time in race mode. Having said that, when you're on the racetrack, it is sure nice to have. Stiffer suspension means less body roll, means faster corners, means a better track time. So I'm okay with that. But when you're just driving around the city, sport mode, normal driving mode, the suspension is totally bearable. All right, so we just had to make a coffee stop and we're gonna continue the video. Just wanted to sum up everything as to, uh, I guess, why we made the change. I know I went, uh, or I mentioned it before, but a lot of people can't comprehend how it's cheaper. And I just wanna kind of break it down simplistically for you. It's a brand new car, no maintenance is needed. Um, our other car needed about 4K in maintenance, um, not including the winter tires that probably needed to be replaced for next winter anyway. Lower interest rate by 1%. Um, there wasn't much negative equity owing on our white one. We got a lot for our white one. This was $15,000, $16,000 less than MSRP, roughly. And in the end, um, I guess it's not cheaper, but it's uh, in the end, we're paying the same and we're getting a brand new car that when we want to trade in for a RS3 or um, whatever, we're going to get more money for this car. Um, not only because it's a 2018, but Ford's no longer making cool cars anymore besides the Mustang. So there's going to be a uh, supply versus demand fight going on there. Um, but it's a 2018. It's, I don't know if, if it being limited will have any effect on it whatsoever, but it well versus the white one. The white one's obviously not limited at all. I mean, it is, but it isn't com in comparison to this car. So yeah, that is, you know, trust me, we did our due diligence, we did our math. And at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I know this doesn't happen, this car is costing us nothing to get into. I promise you. So that being said, that's out of the way. We absolutely love the car. We made the right choice for now. Um, three years down the road, we might trade this in on something bigger, but for now we made the right choice. Love the car, the quirks that I mentioned, the three one, the three main ones, the exhaust flap, how hard it is to get into launch control time-wise and the stiffy ride are, are really the only complaints we have with this thing. Oh, wait, one more. Just remembered the auto on off. Absolutely hate it. I wish there was a button or a switch you could literally flip and it never happen again. The worst, worst is jumping into this thing, going to do your errands, going to you know drive around town and it auto shuts off on you. You don't even notice it because the radio is on. You go to just go, you let the clutch out, give it some gas and it stalls on you. It's not only annoying, but pretty dangerous in my opinion. And I just wish you can go in there and just completely shut that feature off because in my opinion, it's not a feature. I, I absolutely hate it. All right, so I hope you guys all enjoyed the video as much as we did shooting it. Um, as always, Please give this video a thumbs up, like, subscribe, comment, 
and peace.